Hey, this is Sam Black with my second match with Copter Mardu in Modern. I lost the roll again. So I'm going to be on the draw, and I have a shambling event, some removal spells, and lingering souls. So my hand isn't super fast or anything, but this deck isn't really trying to be super fast, so this is a fine keep. And my opponent plays Step Links which I'm just going to kill. So, I don't actually think that there are any popular modern decks at the moment that play step links other than Death Shadow, so I'm assuming that this is Death Shadow. Mishra's Bauble kind of seals that. And they play a Swift Spear and probe me. Probe me again. And Play a stomping ground and attack and lightning bolt me. That's. I don't know if light, lightning bolt me is correct there. Um, it's close. Hard to say without knowing their hand. Anyway, I took some damage and I want to be sure that I stabilize here so. I mean, basically, I'm sure that I want to cast Inquisition and Lightning Bolt, and I don't need to play a tapped land here to play Lingering Souls next turn because I can easily fetch planes with Marsh Flats. So, play the other untapped land and cast Inquisition first because that's obviously right on every level. If my opponent's hand is blanks no mutagenic growth, I get the mutagenic growth and then can bolt the so spear, or if my opponent uses the mutagenic growth, which wouldn't accomplish anything, I could bolt in response. Whereas if I bolt first and my opponent has mutagenic growth, they can save it. Plus, I can just determine based on my opponent's hand that maybe I don't want to cast lightning bolt, whereas I don't get any additional information by casting lightning bolt other than maybe my opponent uses a mutagenic growth. That's not that inf my opponent using a mutagenic growth isn't going to change whether I want to inquisition my opponent. So I see become immense battle rage. Take the battle rage. And bolt the Swift Spear, leaving my opponent with just a battle rage in a land. Or become immense in a land. I don't want to. I bolt the Swift Spear because I don't want to end up in that awkward spot where. I'm taking damage, I know my opponent has become immense, they can save their guy. It just drown them with a pump spell. If they draw another Swift Spear, they can Swift Spear become immense me. I'll take eight, and they won't have anything left, and I can play Lingering Souls and probably stabilize it. Well, it'll be pretty bad. I mean, I'll be at three and I can probably stabilize, and I can gain life with Shambling Vent, and they've already used a Lightning Bolt, and this deck tends to only play two Lightning Bolts, so it's not actually as dangerous to be at three against them as it sounds like against a red deck, especially since I have life gain in my hand. So it's actually not that bad if my opponent draws to a Spear and just cracks me for eight immediately. It's also unlikely there are only three Swift Spears left in their deck. <laughs> they draw Swift Spear and decide not to crack me for eight, which I think is a mistake. It's certainly a weird decision in conjunction with firing off the lightning bolts a couple turns ago. I'm not sure what their strategic approach to the matchup is or what they're putting me on, where that was the way to play the lightning bolts and this is the way to play the mutagenic growth. And it seems like their strategy, seeing that I'm a lightning bolt deck, is to use mutagenic growth to protect Swift Spear, but I don't know that the Swift Spear is really worth more than the seven damage they could have gotten right off the top. Sorry about that background noise. Um, so anyway, I'm just gonna crack that, get a planes, cast lingering souls. I'm going to double block here because, as far as I know, this is going to force a mutagenic, force a become immense, leaving my opponent with just a Swift Spear, and I have lots of Spirit Tokens. This is not a resource that I'm low on. Whereas the 
become immense is representing I could die at any point if my opponent draws a battle rage. So, happy to block here and try to buy the battle rage. Or the become immense. Which, I do. I think that you making this attack here was another big mistake on my opponent's part. It's a really obvious block for me to block with both, and spending Become Immense to kill two spirits is just not something that they can afford to do in this spot. There's not a clear... This doesn't lead them to a winning line. I'm definitely going to have two spirits next turn, and they're not going to just nine me out of nowhere. Yes, it's good to get my clock off the board. They only have ten life. This will kill them fairly soon, but the only way they're going to win this game is to stick Become Immense Battle Rage on their Swiss Spear at this point, and putting themselves in a spot where they have to use it is not going to lead anywhere good. So, they do that, their last card is a land, which definitely makes this not where they wanted to be. I'm just going to play another Lingering Souls, and my opponent draws a Death Shadow, which is probably the best card they could draw at this point, and then attacks, so I'm just going to trade a Spirit for this Swift Spear, and now I'm going to make a bunch of Spirits, and so now I have to figure out if I want to attack my opponent or not, and the basic question is what happens if my opponent draws Tumor Battle Rage, because First of all, it's just the only real card in my opponent's deck. Everything else I'm beating handily. If my opponent draws Teamer Battle Rage, if I don't attack, they have a 12 power trampler. If I do attack, they have a 14 power trampler. Functionally. So, if they have a 12 power trampler, well, so if they attack, I don't know if they have a 12 power trampler or not. And. So I'm going to have to block before finding out if they have the Battle Rage. So if I'm playing around Battle Rage, that means that I have to block with... I'm at 9, so 4 toughness worth of creatures. So I have to block with these 4 Lingering Souls. So if I don't attack, and my opponent attacks, and I'm playing around Battle Rage, I block with these 4 Lingering Souls. I, at this, that point, have 1 Lingering Soul token left and I haven't attacked with it, so my opponent's still at 7, and then they can play whatever they drew after combat. So I'm committing to not making any progress and throwing away 4 tokens to play around Battle Rage. And I don't... there's nothing that's gonna stop... I'm not ending the game on the next turn, I'm not doing anything to make Battle Rage not lethal one turn later. So... Basically, I don't think that I can realistically play around Battle Rage. If my opponent attacks with that shot, I'm going to block it with a single spirit, and if my opponent has, has drawn Battle Rage, I'll die. So, I don't see any reason not to just attack with a spirit and maximize my chances of killing them on the following turn. So, I make the attack. My opponent falls to 6, and doesn't attack because I have five spirits, so I can't kill my opponent, but I have a Shambling Vents, so if that gets through, my opponent is dead, so they, they can't attack here. It just puts them down on board. But I draw Crackling Doom, which incidentally means that I could have played around Battle Rage, but Crackling Doom is actually one of not very many outs to Death Shadow. It's just two Crackling Doom, one Liliana, and three... Four, four, three Path to Exiles and a Johnny Vengeant could keep it tapped after it attacked. So, anyway, uh, that's the way the game played out. I think that it was correct to attack. And I, I don't think that... The fact that I drew Crackling Doom there doesn't mean that I should have played around the Teamer Battle Rage, just like, obviously, the fact that my opponent didn't draw it doesn't mean that I was right to attack. But I think just in terms of my long-term odds of winning based on the information that I had when I made the attack, it was correct to attack with the one spirit. So anyway, that was the first game. The second game, obviously I'm going to be on the draw because I won the first game. And I don't think that I should keep a one land hander that... A, yeah, that 
that's not the right word. Anyway, a hand with one land, especially with a lightning bolt that I can't cast. So I mulligan, and I have a good curve of removal here, so that's an easy keep. So now the question is, do I want to keep Liliana on top? And I don't really know the right answer. I think that I do want it. I have enough mana, and Liliana is a good card in the matchup. The second Liliana is not great, but also my opponent has discard in their deck, and Liliana is my most my highest impact card. So I could certainly imagine that my opponent wants to use a discard spell on my Liliana, so I keep the Liliana on top. And my opponent plays Wild and Coddle, and I'm not gonna use path here. Uh, I have a 1 mana spell, a 2 mana spell, and a 3 mana spell, so at some point the Shambling Vent is going to stunt my development, and I think that it's fine to just take a hit from Wild Nakatl on turn 2 to get it out of the way. And save Path, which is one of my best cards against them, if not my actual best. So take a hit there, and use Helix on the Wild Nakatl. My opponent has mutagenic growth to save it. That's not great for me, but it's fine. I'm going to take another 5 here. And my opponent has Death Shadow. And Hooting Mandrels. So, in a pretty rough spot here, uh, since. Well, before I drew this path, I could only kill one of my opponent's creatures, and my opponent had a lot of creatures. So, if I path the Death Shadow, I'm still taking seven, which is half my life. And then Liliana can't really save me from there. And if I play Liliana, all I'm doing is answering the Swift Spear, and then I'm, I might just, there's a good chance I just die. But, I drew path, so now I can take two from my land and answer my opponent's two big creatures. And then I'm at 12, taking eight, 4 plus, so I'll be at 8 or less. So, very good and important draw, but still not enough to mean that I'm clearly winning. My opponent does not have a forest in their deck. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. The extra land wouldn't really mean it, matter anyway. I have a probe. And that was the last card in their hand, so they just have this Inquisition. Inquisition is going to take one of the Lilianas, and I'm going to take six damage. I draw Soulfire Grandmaster. So now I can play Liliana and kill my opponent's Swift Spear, or I can play Soulfire Grandmaster, or I can attack with Shambling Vent. If I attack with Shambling Vent, I go up to eight. My opponent goes down to five. Uh, and I would be dead to become immense, dead to lightning bolt, dead to team or battle rage. So that sounds pretty bad. It doesn't develop my board, it doesn't meaningfully pressure my opponent, and it leaves me dead to a lot of cards. If I play Soulfire Grandmaster, I'm basically committed to blocking. If my opponent draws any spell, a block is horrible for me. So, clearly the thing to do is cast Liliana. So, make my opponent sacrifice Swift Spear, and now my opponent has to decide between hitting me for half my life and killing Liliana. Uh, I guess it's worth noting, I am still dead to all the same cards that I said before. I'm still dead to Lightning Bolt, I'm still dead to Battle Rage, I'm still dead to Become Immense, because I'm at 6 and this is a 3 power creature. Uh, there's nothing I could have done about that short of a line that involves chump blocking, which doesn't advance my game plan. So I have to just accept that I'm dead to those things. But this is a this way of accepting that I'm dead to those things actually advances my game in some way uh, that is more meaningful than just hitting them with shambling event. So anyway. My opponent decides to attack me, which is very reasonable, and plays his step links. And I 
make, I think, my only rational play, which is to empty my hand and plus Liliana. And my opponent doesn't draw land, so Steplings doesn't do anything. And my opponent chooses to attack Liliana. This doesn't make any sense. Um, I get ignoring Liliana, but now this is just straight lethal if it's attacking me. There's When a creature is lethal, if it hits a player or kills a planeswalker, if it hits the planeswalker, against an opponent with no hand, it's strictly better to attack the player. This just lets me let my opponent kill... This lets me decide if I want to lose Liliana or Soulfire Grandmaster, whereas attacking me forces me to lose Soulfire Grandmaster. So I guess if my opponent wants me to lose Liliana instead of Soulfire Grandmaster, like there's no way that I take it if they attack me, obviously. I am 100% blocking with Grandmaster, whereas here... So if they're more afraid of the Liliana than the Soulfire Grandmaster, there's like a really weird leveling play that theoretically allows for attacking the Liliana, but it's it's not good. So anyway, I, as it happens, do prefer Soulfire Grandmaster to Liliana. Liliana is only answering the step links, and my opponent has shown they don't have a land, and my life gain can kind of outpace the step links, so I'm just going to let the Liliana die, and I get to keep a Soulfire Grandmaster. The block that I almost did there was before I realized that my opponent was attacking Liliana because it was such an unexpected play. And I draw a path. So now I can animate Shambling Vent and leave up path. No, yes, because I do have a plans that I can get. So I can animate Shambling Vent and, well, and I'm gaining four life and leave up path. Uh, I could not... Yeah, there's no way that I can path with buyback here, because this costs three life to get a red land. And I don't have the mana to activate Soulfire Grandmaster without another red. So, I think it's pretty clear that I'm just supposed to animate Shambling Vent, attack, trade life totals with my opponent, or kill the step links, and then have path to protect myself. And I don't think there's any reason to use the path before my opponent forces me to. And my opponent decides that they can't attack here. So now at the end of turn I can path. And that leaves me pretty safe. I'm just going to attack with both, force my opponent to chump block, leaving them with no creatures and putting me up to 10, so now I'm not even dead to Swift Spear become immense. And that's the match. Overall, I think, I mean, this is a, the same kind of strategic matchup situation as the previous match. I think that there were a few plays that my opponent did that I didn't agree with, but I don't remember any that were actually game-changing. I guess if my opponent attacked me with the Wild Nakato and forced me to block with the Soulfire Grandmaster, Liliana kills the Step Links, and then it's Wild Nakato against my Shambling Vents. I get to path the Wild Nakato before it actually kills me, but it takes me a lot longer to kill my opponent, and I'm not sure how this game would have played out. Anyway, uh, I'm playing the, the right cards. This is a good matchup. Death Shadow is a great deck. I'm not going to win 100% of the time, but I'm close to as favorite as you can be in the matchup, I think.